three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Nine Hole Podcast. This is your host, Ian Miller. I am keeping up with the theme of the solo podcast. I'm starting to love them. I'm starting to fall in love with them. I'm starting to get a little confident in them. Uh, I wanted to keep up with the theme of the week, right? So last week, we talked a little bit about confidence. This week, we are talking about adversity. And I had put up a story on social media about, hey, man, it's a slow Tuesday for me. So ask away. Ask me some questions, man. And I got a, I guess it wasn't really a, necessarily a question, but it was a comment about somebody being in a slump and their swing stunk. Said, hey, man, my swing stinks. I'm in a slump right now. That was it. So I was going to answer that in a 60-second story, and I thought, dude, what am I doing trying to spend 60 seconds on talking about a slump, especially when we are spending a fucking week on the theme of adversity? So I wanted to talk a little bit about slumps. I wanted to talk a little bit about getting out of slumps. I have firsthand knowledge in this. I have more knowledge about what a slump is and why they happen as opposed to getting out of them, right? So I didn't hit 300 every single year. Slumps happen. But I wanted to touch on why you slump, what actually happens, why you struggle mentally during these slumps, and how do you get out of it? More so, I wanted to also dive in and share some things that I found out that I learned personally firsthand and experienced on what the best do in the world when it comes to slumping. What they do, how they go about it. And I wanted to talk about something that they understand, right? So there's three things that the best in the world do and understand, and they do every single day, day in and day out, rain or shine. And I'm not saying that it prevents them from going into slumps, but when the shit hits the fan, if you will, they understand the power of these three things that I will get into. The power of the mind, the power of paying attention, and the power of intent. Touch on that at the end. But first, I wanted to unwrap it. I wanted to hit on it. I wanted to hit on just what a slump is. And so, like I said... We're in the theme right now of adversity. We are going to spend a week at a time diving into a topic. I think this is what we're going to do. This is the feedback I'm getting from you guys, which I'm extremely appreciative of. And we're going to spend a week and we're going to just dive into it, man. I will give you every ounce of knowledge that I know. Why not? I'd love to do that for you. And if it helps somebody, it helps somebody. And then that's a W, huge W. First and foremost, I love to give a shout out. If you are watching this on YouTube, if you are watching this on Apple Podcasts, man, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the thumbs up. Appreciate the likes, all that stuff, man. That helps me um, obviously market myself a little bit more. It helps me get better guests on here to talk to you guys. Um, Man, it kind of just lets me know that I am doing what I am supposed to be doing for you. So that's awesome. I appreciate it, man. Um, Fires me up. So, Back to it. We're talking about adversity. And adversity is a whole plethora of different things. Right? We talked about it. What was that on Monday? Talked about that two days ago. What adversity is. uh, You know, it's misfortune. It's obstacles. Things that maybe are in your control that are self-induced. Things that are out of your control. That you have no. You just can't affect the outcome of anything that's happening to you. Man, I get it. I get it. I've been there. I've been through it. But what adversity on the field looks like, <clears throat> it, it looks like a slump. It looks like uncertainty. Those are the two, those are the two biggest things on the field, right? When we think about adversity, we think about uncertainty. We know the failure that's tied to being a fucking great when it comes to baseball. Failing seven times out of ten, you are one of the greatest baseball players. That's it. So amidst all of that failure, there's going to be a plethora of uncertainty. Here I I go again with the incredible words. I did my reading this morning, 5.30 in the morning. So we know that adversity on the field 
comes about in the form of slumps and uncertainty, right? People always want to be safe. People always want to be secure. Man, that is human nature. If they can control the environment, they might be able to control what happens. And when that uncertainty starts creeping in, when those factors are outside of their control and shit starts happening to them that they can't influence or prevent, that's creepy. That's crazy. Then you start playing scared. Then you're scared off the field. Man, I, man slumps are obviously, if you play long enough, you're going to experience slumps. That's that's what comes with the territory. We talked about, hey, if you want to be successful, you're going to have to overcome adversity. You're going to have to slay that beast, man. You have to. That's the key to success. There's no other way to get to the big leagues. There's no other way to play baseball in college. There's no other way to get drafted. There's no other way to do anything else. So I had a dude, before I jump into it, I got a funny story uh, about a teammate of mine that I, abs an ex-teammate of mine that I absolutely respect, respected, respect now, uh, still keep in touch with him. May have even been a guest on the podcast. Um, but, uh, dude, he was going through a stretch, and I saw him go hitless, making some plays out in the field that, like, the slump had carried over. That's the worst part of the slump, right? When it carries over to defense, or it carries over into the clubhouse, or it carries home with you off the field, dude. That's when we got a problem. That's when it's a problem. So his idea, like, the his idea behind it is he would take a shower in full uniform on that field that he was slumping in. I could see it. I can literally see it now. I can see him taking a shower in his jersey and his pants and his cleats, hat, everything, whole nine, but BGs, batting gloves, everything, everything. Took a shower, full uniform, man. I'd be lying to you if I said that I've never done that either. I took, I took that and I tried to implement it, not saying it necessarily worked, but you could do all the things that you'd like to do when it comes to trying to get out of a slump and the majority of things aren't going to work. So let's jump into why you slump. What happens? What is this? Like, what is a slump, right? We talked about it, uncertainty. Nothing's going right. You're in a funk, man. So why do you slump? You slump because you're afraid to make mistakes. Maybe something bad happened, or maybe you have a bad series. You have a bad game. You got caught stealing a couple times. You made a couple errors in the field. And then you you start you start thinking. Then you start stinking. And then it snowballs. You're afraid to make mistakes. You maybe you hold back on the aggression. Right? If you're a base stealer, if you're a base runner, you don't take that free bag. You don't be aggressive. Ah, you know, man. Shit, I haven't gotten a hit in three weeks, dude. I don't want to get thrown out stealing second. Are you kidding? This guy's a one six home. And the catcher's got a fucking noodle arm. That's a slump. You struggle with the bat and it starts kind of creeping into all your other, uh, you know, all the other facets of your game. Take it in defense, in the locker room, take it home with you. The way you run the bases, you have a free bag, you're, you're afraid to take it. That third baseman's back and you're a speed guy. You're afraid to lay a bunt down. Oh, it's an 0-0 count. A fastball away. Ah, pull back. Ah. I don't want to foul it off or miss it and then I'm 0-1, you know. That's what being in a slump is, man. You're afraid to make mistakes. You're afraid to take chances. It's a 2-0 count, or it's a 3-0 count. Sometimes the the hitting coach, depending on, or the manager, depending on if he has confidence in you and your ability and your bat, will give you the green light on 3-0. What are you What are you expecting? What do you think a a pitcher is going to try to do in a 3-0 count? He's going to try to fucking groove a fastball in there and throw a strike. So sometimes, depending on how you're going, how you're thinking, what the manager feels, he might give you the green light to go ahead and swing. 2-0 count, it's a plus count. You got to do damage there. 2-0-3-1. Maybe you're in a slump and you start thinking about the ABs before, the three ABs prior. Ah, dude, you know what? I just struck out him 0 for 3. It's a 3-0 count. Or it's a 2-0 count. You know, it's 3-1. Maybe I'll see if eh, see if he throws a strike here. Like you're taking back the aggression, right? You're kind of laying off the gas a little bit, dude. That is detrimental to the game. That is detrimental to your team, and that is detrimental to your development. 2 0 3-0, just pulling back, you know, stealing a bag. You're afraid that you're afraid to take chances. You're afraid to take risks. You're 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 basically you're playing scared, you're playing restricted, and that is a different animal. You do not want to do that. 
right? That's when we have a problem. That's when you start diagnosing it. You start worrying and focusing on the worst case scenario. Oh, dude. It's a man on second base. I'm playing center field. There's a ground ball up the middle. The worst thing that I could do is come up throwing and miss it. And then let me tell you something. The, mo the loneliest feeling in the world for a baseball player or an outfielder the loneliest feeling in the world for an outfielder is running back to go get the ground ball that you missed. Either it skips over your glove or it skips under your glove. There is no worse feeling as an outfielder. Stuff like that can start happening to you if you're in a slump and you just, the wheels start spinning mentally, man. That's, that's what a slump is. That's what happens in a slump. You start playing scared. You start playing restricted. You start second guessing your natural ability. You start second guessing the shit that got you there. That's what a slump is. Why why do you struggle mentally during slumps and, and times of uncertainty on the field? Well, first of all, number one, the, the one thing that you don't want to do when it comes to a slump is go back and start fucking around with the mechanics, your swing. Ah, dude, you know what? I'm over my last 16 with 14 punches and 12 of them are looking and the other two I'm ass out swinging at stuff in the dirt. Let me fix my elbow in my in my stance. You know, maybe if I raise the elbow up and maybe I'll open up. You know, I'm over my last twelve. I'm over my last two. I'm out, I'm over my last twelve with ten punches. Like maybe I'll just open up. Like that's where you ruin a season. <clears throat> it goes from you having a tough time in a game or a series, or a week, or a month, and it can steamroll, and you can and you can ruin, ruin a whole season doing that, man. Messing, tinkering with the mechanics. Ah, oh, dude, you know what? I'm, I haven't had a hit in three games. Let me change up my stance. You know how hard hitting is? Dude, it's damn near impossible. Why would you change everything up and what it looks like in the mechanics of everything that you worked for in the off season because you're over 12 you need to lock in here man slumps are mental slumps are mental so why why you struggle mentally during slumps and these times of uncertainty man you're you're doubting or second guessing yourself and your ability you're questioning everything man that leads to fear either in the box or on the mound you start thinking about worst case scenario the inner voice is not there. We talked about that in one of the previous episodes, the positive talk that you have with yourself. Questioning your ability, you're almost seeing like failure. You're almost just waiting for it to happen. You're being complacent. You're just, you're you're not pushing through, man. There's adversity. A slump is adversity. It leads to fear, right? In the box or on the mound, you're taking your tools and the player that you are and what got you here, what got you on the team, what got you at this level. And you're going to war with a watered down JV version of yourself instead of the feel the fearless version of yourself. You're going to battle with a, a watered down, like what if scared version of yourself, as opposed to going to battle confident, believing in your ability. Believing in the hard work that you put in behind the scenes. You're worrying about the shit that is out of your control. And the first thing that you're, the first thing that you're going to do and the first thing that you shouldn't do is go back to the drawing board and start over. I'm 0 for 8 with six lazy pop-ups to the third baseman. I'm a left-handed hitter. I'm 0 for 8 and I'm, I have six lazy pop-ups little dumpy pop-ups to the infield, to the third baseman. Why would I go back to the cage or go back to the drawing board and fuck myself up more mentally and switch up my mechanics? Open up a little bit. Spread out. Terrible. It's how it steamrolls, man. It's how it steamrolls. It's all in here. Was I on time? What was I looking for? Did I do my homework on this pitcher? Did I watch his warm-up pitches? Do I know that he throws 94? Or am I sitting on 90, right? Why am I late? That's where you start. You don't go back to the drawing board and start tinkering and fucking around with your mechanics and your swing, dude. That's how you lose a season.
Sometimes the ruts that you get yourself into in slumps are just, you can't come back from. You can't do it, man. You can't do it. You really can't. You have enough of those years, at least in, in professional baseball, <laughs> smell you. Smell you. There's no room for the week in pro ball, dude. You worry about others' opinions and other things that are completely out of your control that no one cares about. I had a a dude, uh, somebody that I sincerely respect in the game, an ex-teammate of mine, Braden Bishop, with the Mariners. Um, man, he told me something that was absolutely fantastic. This was in AAA Tacoma, I believe. And he said, man, you're never doing as well as you think you are, and you're never doing as bad as you think you are. So shit could be going just terrible for you. You could be 0 for 4 with the worst four punches of your life. You think, dude, I am getting sent down. My average dropped from 275. I am now hitting in the 250s. I just went 0 for 4, and I look like a 12-year-old playing against, you know, 25-year-old all-stars. You always think. You always worry about others' opinions, man. You think it's magnified. Dude, no one no one cares. No one's focusing in, like, no one's focusing on you and your struggles and your ability. You are the one that's amplifying it. You're worrying about others' opinions and other things that are just out of your control. What can you control? What are you sitting on? What are you looking for? Why would you be looking for anything other than his best pitch? We can get into that at a different time. I sat fastball. My best years, I sat fastball and I did not deviate from that. Why the fuck would I sit on anything other than that? This dude throws 100 miles an hour. Why am I sitting on anything other than that? If this is a knuckleballer, you know how hard it is to hit a knuckleball? You know how insane it is when that knuckleballer starts you off with a first pitch fastball just to get ahead? That's crazy. That happened to me. Got a hit off that motherfucker too. So how do you, how do you get out of slumps, man? How do you get out of it? How do you get out of that adversity? How do you get out of that uncertainty? When it comes to being in a slump on the baseball field, man. Everyone's going to have a different answer. Everybody's going to have a different, uh, you know, different solution to getting out of it. There's no, not everybody's the same, right? Like, how do you hit a home run? How do you hit a home run? How are you supposed to hit a home run? There's a different answer for every, Like, catch the ball out in front. Make sure you're back out, bro. Like, dude, I don't know. I don't know. Everyone's going to have a different answer, and there's a unique way for everybody to get out of it. Not everybody's a robot. Something that works for somebody isn't going to work for you, right? And something that worked for me might not necessarily work for you, man. I'm not. First and foremost, before, <clears throat> before you start going back to the drawing board and before you start stripping down your swing and just screwing yourself up mentally more and digging yourself into a deeper hole— you need to look at yourself in the mirror and ask, are my actions aligning with my results? I'm putting out a dumpy performance. Are my actions aligning with that dumpy performance? Am I getting my work in? Am I doing my routine? Am I doing the things that I need to be doing? First and foremost, before anything, what's changed? What's changed in my routine? What's changed in my preparation? Start there. That's where you that's where you need to start. Not oh dude. I'm striking out at an astronomical clip. Let me fucking close my stance and like move my head back and you know stand up straight. Like, dude, nah. Hitting's hitting's too hard, dude. Hitting's too hard. Go back to the drawing board. How do you prepare? Are your are your actions aligning? with the long-term goals that you're trying to accomplish? Or are your actions aligning with the current slump that you're in? Yeah, you want to get to the big leagues, dude, but you're not, you don't show up, you don't hit early, you don't work on your swing, you don't work in the weight room beforehand, you don't work on bunting, you don't work on tracking the ball, you don't work out in the outfield, you don't field extra ground balls, like, you want to get to the big leagues, dude? Nah, no chance for you, dude. No chance for you. You need to look yourself in the mirror and you need to break it down. Hold yourself accountable. Stop making excuses. Take control of your success. Go back to the drawing board mentally, not physically. There's this quote. Uh, it's not mine. Can't. 
Can't take credit for it. Wish I could, but I can't. Sixes and sevens don't produce level 10 results. So if you are working like a six or a seven, if you're putting in the work that a six or a seven puts in, and you have the attitude and the effort of a six or a seven, you are going to play and you are going to perform like a six or a seven. Sixes and sevens don't produce level 10 results, man. If you want to, if you want to pump out level 10 seasons, level 10 caliber seasons, you have to put in the work that a level 10 dude would be pumping out. A six or a seven can't have a, a level 10 season. That That's not how that works, man. It's not how that works. The ball doesn't lie. Ball does not lie. You don't hit 350 or 330 over the course of a full season because you're a six or seven and you got lucky. Anybody can get lucky for a series or a week, dude. But, like, the ball will not lie, and you will eventually get weeded out. If you're a six or a seven, you will eventually fizzle out. So you need to put in that level 10 work. That's how that works, man. Sixes and sevens don't produce level 10 results. Sorry about it. A baseball season's way too long. There's way too many factors that go into a baseball season. It's about being process-oriented. You want to get out of a slump, you need to go back to the drawing board as it pertains to your preparation, your routine, what you're looking on, what you're looking for. Pay attention. You need to make a decision. This is going back to being average, dude. You need to make a decision. Stop making excuses. It's no one else's fault but your own. You're in a slump. You're in a slump. It's not your coach's fault that you're in a slump. It's not your mom's fault that you're in a slump. You're not in a slump because you didn't have pasta last night. It's your it's your pregame lucky meal. That's not why you're in a slump, dude. Look at how you prep look look at how you prepare and think about how you go about things mentally. Stop making excuses, stop procrastinating. If you know you need to get a workout in before you get to the field, show up on time, do it. Show up before anybody else, do it. If your glove stinks, you're in trouble. Show up and get that work in. Because I'll be the first, I will be the first to tell you, you are going to go through slumps in a baseball season, especially the longer you play and the higher you go up, the more games you're going to play, the more experienced the kids are going to be, the pitchers are going to be, the hitters are going to be. So you are going to struggle and you are going to slump. But the thing that could save you is your glove. Yeah, dude, you know what? This kid hasn't gotten a hit in three weeks, but he's a gold glove caliber center fielder. He will go and get the ball whenever it's hit. If that thing is in the gap, I know he's coming down with it. Yeah, he hasn't gotten a hit in three weeks, and he swings at everything. He is fucked up mentally at the plate. But we need his glove at short in order to win a baseball game. That's how you prolong your career. Maybe use a slump to reality check yourself. What are your deficiencies elsewhere, man? Okay, yeah, I... I'm a nine-hole hitter, and I haven't gotten a hit in six games. What can I do to further my career? S stand out elsewhere, dude. What are you doing on the bases, man? What are you doing with the glove? We talk about work ethic all the time. We talk about confidence, but like, you can get anybody can get better with the glove, dude. Doesn't matter what you do with the plate. Anybody can get better with the glove. Stop procrastinating. Stop blaming others, dude. I got. Everybody knows somebody that blames others for everything. We we all know people that can't ever take accountability for stuff that happens to them. Ah, uh, you know what? It wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. Uh, that's not me. You know? That's weak sauce, dude. Blaming others, procrastinating, talking about... Dude, if you have to validate how hard you work to other people, if you have to tell other people how hard you work, that doesn't pass the sniff test. That doesn't pass the sniff test. Not getting by me, dude. If you have to blabber and be loud about how hard you work. Ah, dude, I was up early this morning at 5 a.m. Or working out, out working you. I went to bed last night at 2 a.m. I was up at 4.30. Again, working out. That's bullshit. People can see through that, man. Take accountability. Work hard. Don't have to validate it to anybody. Let how you play
and how you go, you go about your business on the field. Let that do the talking for you, man. Everybody's heard the loudest person in the room isn't necessarily the strongest person in the room, man. You know that. Take personal responsibility for your input, not necessarily the results. We talk about being process-oriented, right? Don't worry about the results. The results will come with time. The results will come. You'll get out of this slump if you just focus on the process, dude. And, and you know what? I hear, I've heard that fucking so much throughout my career. It's crazy. It's true. It's true. You can take responsibility for your input. Are you giving level six or level seven effort and expecting level 10 results? Dude, you don't deserve level 10 results. Stop being weak up here. That's just what it is, man. So I, I alluded to it right off the start. <clears throat> I said there are, there are things that the best players in the world do consciously, subconsciously. They don't even, sometimes they're not even aware that they're doing it. The times that I spent up in the big leagues, I wasn't necessarily leading off every single game, right? It's a defensive replacement. I was that dude that could get in there and track it down in the outfield. So I was right. I'd come in late game. If we need a win, put me out in center field, take one of the, the older guys out. If you need a pinch runner, daddy's ready. That's who I was. So I spent a lot of time on the bench absorbing, learning, seeing how everybody went about their business. And I concluded, I saw, I learned that there are three things that you, regardless of if you're in middle school High school, college, any level, pro, like minor league, indie ball, fucking major, dude, whatever. You can implement this stuff, man. These are what the best players in the world do. They understand these three things. They understand and utilize three, these three powers, even if they aren't conscious when they're doing it. Here's what the best in the world do day in and day out, regardless of of if they are hitting 600 or they are in the worst slump of their career. They do this every day. They understand these three things, man. Number one, they understand the power of the mind. So we talked about it. We talked about it when it comes to confidence, having confidence in yourself. I spent a fucking week talking about confidence. This is just a little bullet point in the power of the mind. You could spend positivity, confidence, and belief. Every single one of those guys, the best in the world, whether you're in the big leagues or you're an all-star in the big league, they're positive. They think positive. They self-talk positive. They expect positivity. Why, why would there be negativity surrounding anything that goes on in the game of baseball when you fail a lot? You need to be positive. You need to have a confidence. You need to have a quiet confidence. Or, you know, if you're if you're a loud type of eccentric individual, here I go again with the unbelievably awesome words. You need to have confidence. You need to have confidence in your ability, and you need to have confidence in your preparation. You need to have confidence in your routine. And that's hopefully what would allow the athletic ability to come out without having to force it or restrict it or play scared when you're going through a tough time. You need to have a belief. This is what the best in the world do. They believe, they're positive, and they have confidence. The external does not affect the internal. The external does not affect the internal. So the external factors, the shit that's going on externally, the shit that's out of your control, the stuff that's going on outside, whether it is a slump, whether it's adversity, whether it's you got benched, you got demoted, that stuff can't affect the internal, the internal voice, the internal dialogue, how you speak to yourself, how you think, what you think about, how you go about your business. The external factors cannot affect the internal dialogue, the internal voice. That is huge, man. We've all been through it. You start slumping a little bit. Start getting that pouty lip. The woe is me. I've been there. Everybody's been there, dude. But that's the external factors affecting the way that you go about your business, the way that you talk to your teammates, the way that you interact with them. Oh, shit. You know what, dude? I haven't gotten a hit in three weeks. I'm not picking my fucking guy up that just went deep. Oh, we just won an extras, dude. I'm not going to go out there and jump up and down and celebrate with the team. I didn't get a hit. 
Like that's that's the external factors just weighing on you, affecting the your the internal voice, the internal confidence. Can't have that, dude. Mindset and performance. So you are allowing your performance and your numbers to dictate how you go about your business, how you are as a teammate, how you are as a, you know, a, a friend, anything, dude. How you are as a person. You are you are more than your statistics. You are more than what you are putting out on the field, dude. Mindset and performance. The mindset is not going to change. The routine's not necessarily going to change. Yeah, if, if dude, if there are things that you need to do when you go back to the drawing board, you break it down, you strip it down. If that's needed, then yeah, you're going to make adjustments, dude. But the mindset doesn't change. The internal voice does not change. The overall mission does not change just because you're in a slump. As soon as it does, that season's over. You can smell that season. Smell ya. That season's over for you. Sometimes you get into those slumps and it you dig a hole so deep you can't fucking get out of it. That's serious. Number two, something that the best do in the world and something that they understand and they bring the noise with every day is they pay attention. The power of paying attention. So what can you control? You can control your attitude, your effort. You can control you show up on time. You can control if you go through your routine. You can control if you cheat, if you if you skimp out on doing an exercise. You can you can, dude. You can control if you get your bunting in, your early ground ball work, early fly ball reads. Get your workout in. Did you get that shake in? Did you get eight hours last night? Or were you up until four a.m. watching Netflix? You know, like dude, you can control that. The best players in the world, just the shit that's out of their control, they don't even think about it, dude. They don't even think about it. Why would you? Why would you? If you can't influence it, then like, why would you even spend a second thinking about it? Why worry about it? If it's out of your control, man, don't fucking worry about it. What can you can control? What can you can control? What can you control is the proper English phrase. There are advantages of being present, man. Think about think about the stuff that you pick up on when you are actively engaged, actively in discussion, man. Some of the best players in the world that I've been teammates with, that I've been on a major league field with, dude, in between ABs, they're watching. They're watching what everybody else is getting pitched. If there is a similar batter to them in the lineup, they will watch them. How is this staff, how is this pitcher, how are they attacking him? Are they starting him off the same way that they're starting me off? I'm a little nine-hole hitter or a leadoff type profile hitter. How are they pitching the other guy that's the same type of dude that I that I am? Same skill set. Are they pitching him backwards too? Pick up on that. Dude, there are advantages to being present. There are advantages to, you know, watching, consuming. Being a student of the game. Be a student of the game. I remember, dude, this is dead. I swear on my life this happened. I am that that fateful year, 27 years old, minor league spring training. And I am I'm working on a new swing. Starting to hit for a little bit of pop. And I saw that my GM, Jerry DePoto, was in the front row watching... Uh, his name was Art Warren. He was a flamethrower. Last I saw, he was with the Reds for a little bit. But Art Warren was throwing, and he, he dude, throw, he's so nasty. Dude throws fuzz. And he's a scary dude. And he's scary because he's one of the nicest dudes in the world. And really nice dudes that throw fucking real hard and get mean on the mound, those are scary people, dude. Those are real scary people. So I'm watching Art warm up, and I'm like, dude, this guy throws a hunch. This guy throws 100 miles an hour. I'm wearing a jersey that is like three or four sizes too big for me. I'm in minor league spring training. I'm wearing this dumpy fucking jersey. I need to lock in here. I need to lock in here. So I'm watching him, and I see Jerry DePoto tiptoeing around, you know, behind the the front row. And I'm like, dude, I need to 
I need to like pick something up. I need to be a student of the game right here. And so I'm watching Art warm up, and I noticed that this guy, he, A, he's obviously absolutely filthy. But he's not throwing any off speed, man. He's he's not mixing in a changeup. He's not mixing in his banger slider. He's not throwing anything other than fastballs. And everybody else, it's in but do we're in spring training. It's hot. We're wearing jerseys that stink. Too big for us. Don't fit right, dude. I'm wearing a double ear flap helmet. The moon, the moon helmets. And I look around and no one's paying attention. People are fucking around on the bench. People are just talking. And I'm picking up, I'm saying, okay, this guy's just throwing cheese, just throwing fastballs. You guys can set your machine up to 100 miles an hour. And eventually, after you struggle for a little bit, you will find a way to be on time for that. You will find a way to make contact with that. Even though that's insane to even think about and it's tough to overcome, you'll be able to eventually adapt and overcome it. With enough persistence. So I am sitting there and I'm like, dude, this guy throws fuzz and he's scary, but he's not mixing in anything else. So he, I know he's just going to be throwing a fastball. If, if you go up to the plate, regardless if the dude throws 105 or if he throws 55, if you know that you are only going to get fastballs, you are going to have an advantage. I went up there and I ended up getting in a 2-0 yeah, it was a 2-0 count. All fastballs, spiked two of them. Fastball away on the third one. Ended up hitting an opposite field home run. In front of Mr. DePoto. And I still remember that to this day. It was all because I was a student of the game. Everybody else around me was fucking around, not paying attention, not being a student of the game, not consuming, not trying to just get slight advantages from being present. They weren't aware of it. Everybody else is striking out, getting mowed down. And here I am. I just went oppo taco <sighs> off a dude that throws 100 miles an hour because I'm paying attention and I knew what was going to be coming. Think about what you could do if you just paid attention to the pitcher warming up. Obviously, it is tough, dude. A nine-inning baseball game can drag on. There are a whole bunch of rules now where we got pitch clocks and shot clocks and, you know, ball ones because of time. Like, dude, I, I get it. I get it. It could be tough, dude. You you got two or three innings in between ABs. That could take a while. I get it. So it might be tough to consistently lock in all the time. But when you're coming up, I dude, first thing you could do is start locking in on the pitcher. What is he throwing? What is he going to in big count? The 2-0, 2-2. Like you got to throw a strike there. You don't want to go down 3-0 to a hitter, and you don't want to go ball three to a hitter in a two-strike count. Like, what does he go to in big situations? What can he throw for a strike? Dude, watch his warm-up pitches. If he can't throw a fucking breaking ball for a strike, if it's bouncing six feet in front of the plate on every single pitch in warm-ups, I'm going to eliminate that from his arsenal. And I can say, oop, that's one less pitch that I have to worry about. That dude can't throw it in the vicinity of the strike zone. So why would I even, you know what I mean? That's the type of stuff that you can pick up if you pay attention. Be a student of the game, dude. There are tactical advantages everywhere. You hear pitches, t you hear pitchers are tipping pitches and stuff. Where does that come from? That comes from fucking dudes that are locked in and paying attention to the little tails. The little tells, I mean, like, dude, they're, they're, they're everywhere. They're everywhere, man. You just have to focus. You just have to lock in. What are you looking for? You'll pick up what you're trying to see, man. Be a student of the game. The best players in the world are locked in mentally. The best players in the world pay attention. And the best players in the world, number three, are intentional. And this is a big one, dude. This is a big one. So you step onto the field, you are... You're trying to go to war with a purpose. You have a purpose for being there. You went through six hours prior to first pitch with a purpose. You take BP with a purpose. Every swing in batting practice has a purpose. That early work you do in the cage has a purpose. That workout you did before you got in the cage has a purpose. Your lunch has a purpose. You're not going to eat Mickey D's before first pitch, are you? Come on, dude. So 
there's intent behind everything that Major League Baseball players do. There is intent behind everything that the best baseball players in the world do. There's intent behind everything that the best athletes in the world do, the most successful people in the world do. There's intent behind everything. They're not on autopilot, dude. Discipline. If you know you have to do something, we touched on it earlier, do it. Why would you not do it? Why would you not do it, man? Because it's not important to you? Because you want to remain average? The best players in the world are intentional and they have discipline. They know what they need to do. They know what they need to work on. They know when they need to do it. And then they do it. Routine. They're intentional with their routine. Why would you stray from that? You go into a slump. Look yourself in the mirror. How is your routine? How is your preparation? Has it been different since you kind of entered into the slump? Are you just like negating uh, a section of your preparation? That's another fantastic word. Are you just Xing out a, a portion of the, you know, the preparation that you need to be putting in, dude? That routine, man, people are diehard disciplined in that routine. Some of the most successful people ever do that stuff, man. Whatever routine works for you, everybody's going to have a different routine, but you need to come up with one and you need to stick to it. You need to stick to it when times are tough and when the seas are calm, when things are going well and when shit is not going well. You need to stick to it. You need to, that's your foundation, dude. Hopefully through enough trial and error, hopefully you've played baseball long enough to where you develop a routine. You have a sense of what you need to do in order to prepare for that 705 or 105 or, you know, 405 first pitch, whatever it is, you know what you need to do in order to prepare. Now you need to be disciplined enough to execute on that preparation. That's what the best in the world do, man. And they're intentional behind all that shit. They are on purpose with purpose. Everything they do has a purpose and it is intentional. They are not going through the day. They are not going through a season. They are not going through a life on autopilot. You can't do that, man. Can't do it. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. You're just not, man. It needs to be on purpose with purpose. You need to be intentional. You have to have discipline and you need to lock in a routine, man. And if and if you don't have one, one will be assigned to you because of the slumps that you're going to go through, because of the trials and tribul the tribulations that you're going to have to overcome, dude. One will be assigned to you. So start thinking about it. Me, I was intentional with everything I wrote down. I kept a book. I kept a fucking log of all that stuff. Routine and, and a, a pitcher log. What pitcher would, would throw to me, uh, what the situation was, what the pitch was and the count that he threw to me, what I did with it, what it looked like, were there men on? Was he quick to the plate? Was he a one-two? Like, how was it when I was on base? I had a book for that, and I had a book for routine. What time I got up, what I ate for breakfast, what I ate for lunch, how I felt, what my sleep was like. What lunch I had, all that stuff, man. How my infield outfield was, what my arm felt like, why, you know, did I long to all this stuff. Dude, I was intentional. On purpose, with purpose. Volume times time equals skill. That is a great equation for anybody that's kind of going through the ringer, man. Volume times time equals skill. You develop skill by the volume. The amount of practice, the amount of preparation, times time, how many times you do it, how many sessions you put in, how many reps you put in, that will equate to skill. That is a great, great, G-W-E-A-T, that is a great way to end this episode. I appreciate everybody tuning in. I will see you guys here in the next day or two. Everyone have a good day. Keep grinding. Don't let that slump win. All right. Peace.